Uh, welcome back to my channel. I don't really have much of an intro today and that's totally fine. We are going to jump into it. So as you saw by the title of today's video, today we're playing with something super exciting and that is the Morphe and Lisa Frank collection. I didn't get like the brushes because they just didn't do anything for me. I did, however, pick up some of the sponges. Look at that. It's a, is that backwards? Oh, it's upside down. That's why I was like, can you tell that it's a gumball machine? It's a gumball machine. The packaging in this, freaking brilliant. And I don't know what else to tell you. So super excited about that. The reason that I bought these is because we had the testers out and I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. it was awesome. You get two full-size bubblegum beauty sponges and three mini bubblegum sponges. And I'm not gonna lie, that's also part of the appeal in purchasing this um, for me anyways. One, all of my sponges, um, I mean, they're looking a little tragic, to be honest. But also, I don't own any of the like the little baby ones for like really digging up in here. Or there's someone I follow on Instagram. I think she uses little tiny beauty blenders when we're doing like her eye art, and she like packs her color in like on her lid. And I was like, is this the key to getting white eyeshadow to look like seamless? Look at that. There's freaking cute. So it's one palette, but there are three different packaging options for you. I got the unicorn because as you guys know, my first video of Halloween 2020 was a unicorn. And I was like, oh, that's fitting. And I've actually done another Lisa Frank uh, body paint. I did like a back to school Lisa Frank style or whatever. This is the cutest ever. So it mimics like an actual Lisa Frank notebook. It says the inside right here, there's like a little inscription. It says, it was a magical day when Morphe met the rainbows and whimsy of Lisa Frank's fantastic world. From bright burst of blue to the perfect pop of pink, every shade of your imagination is in this palette. Let your most vibrant dreams come true. And then underneath it says, this palette belongs to, oh my God. I got my Sharpie. This palette belongs to average Jim. Morphe doesn't always include like the shade names in the palette, which drives me nuts. Like they include that little plastic insert that I try very, very hard to keep up with so that when I'm doing tutorials, I can tell you guys exactly what I'm using. And then always inevitably I'm like, but for this palette, they've actually included the names. So I'm gonna go in with this beautiful red shade. This is called Buzz. And because we're working with such like crazy bright colors, I want to make sure that I am stippling in order to pack product exactly where I want it. I have been absolutely loving this new shade of like my cut crease that I've been doing where I drag it a little bit higher because I feel like it's better suited for like my overall face. So because I am someone, because I am someone who lives to use the same brush for multiple products and I'm not about to do one eye and then go back and do the other eye, I find it easier, especially when you're like, I really hope this is symmetrical to literally bounce back and forth and use your pupils as reference. So I'm going to be talking you through just this side because this is my good side. So next I'm going to dip into the shade Hunter, which is going to be this orange right next to this red. Super convenient. It's like they knew what I was going to do. Or just knew Roy G. Biv. I'm knocking off a little bit of excess product from that brush so that I can continue using it. I am going to be tapping a shade right into that orange. So, so yellow, you guys know, is like literally one of my favorite shades in the whole entire world. She looks like me is in the palette. Did you guys have Lisa Frank notebooks in school? Like, am I just like showing my age here? Or are you guys like, no, that was like the best thing ever. And tell me I'm not alone here in my appreciation of this collab. I haven't been super excited about a lot of things that have launched in 2020. I was mentioning this in my Robbie D. Christie and ColourPop review, which you guys have not seen because I just like kind of really fell out of filming and then when I started trying to get back into filming I was like but it's not good and that's kind of like the headspace that I've been in for a hot minute since I did have such a like prolonged absence from filming in general and now I just feel like none of it's good enough but that's not a cute look okay we don't we don't want to sit we don't want to sit in our discontent okay we need to we need to like pony up so I've been trying to film I have filmed probably like six or seven videos at this point 
and you guys haven't seen a single one just because I'm like, oh, all of these are trash. But sometimes you gotta make bad art to make good art, and so um, I have made six or seven like really bad arts in that video that you may or may not see in the future. I mentioned that because the market is so oversaturated, it's just, it's hard to not only like keep up with everybody's like new launches, but also like to be excited about it. Now we're going in to this metallic green shade. Everything else that I've done up until this point has been matte, but there's not a green of equal vibrance here in this palette that um, that is matte, but it's called Peekaboo. And we are going to start with that because I really want that to like kiss in to this yellow. Like look how neon that is. That's what we needed. So there's a lot of kick up in the pan here and I don't necessarily, I don't know, it's pretty, but it it almost looks more like a silk topper. It's like the way that it's kind of applying and like I've done the exact same motion with every other shade that's up here. So I'm gonna use the Zoomer in Zorbit color, which is another green. It's not quite as bright, but I do think it'll suffice for the purpose of this rainbow. See. That looks better. So basically I wasn't excited for like a lot of things that were launching this year, but the few things that I was excited about would be the Raw Beauty Christy and ColourPop collab because I just love her. That collab, I enjoyed her Pure collab, which you guys have seen that video I'm sure already. And if not, I will boop it somewhere maybe at the end of this video. This is my favorite thing that's launched from Morphe and they've launched a lot of things and like I've been gifted several palettes and I'm like, ah, no, thank you. But then I'm like, oh, okay, that's nice. But I never would have purchased them for myself because I just, I just like wasn't that excited about it. Um, doesn't mean that they're not, that they're not good. It's just, I'm a, I'm a color queen. So I usually gravitate more towards this. So now we need to feather some blue in and I'm not going to be worried about like the lower portion of it because um, I am clean it up because I haven't done my foundation yet. Yay! So for this, we're going to go in with the color Angel Kitty, which is this very cute little blue right there. We're also going to be picking up this like really pretty like violet shade right here, which is actually called Violet and Velvet. We're going to stipple this right here. So I need to carve out my crease and I've noticed that I'm not necessarily the best at doing that on camera. So please enjoy this, this musical overture. So I'm gonna be using um, this and we are going to, we're gonna get into the color Blanca. I think maybe I should get like an even smaller one though, if they make those. So moving on to the face. For foundation today, I'm really embarrassed to say that I am just now on board with the Too Faced Born This Way. Um, I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah, uh, how dare I? <laughs> so Morphe makes like three different sponges. I've played with, I think, two out of the three and none of none of those are as soft as, as this is. And I just love it. This is the other Morphe sponge, one of the other ones. I like this one because I like the flat edge specifically for what I just used it for, that little like, just a skosh more of that violet and velvet color. Violet and velvet, not violent. We're not like fighting. We could. This is Persilla. It's like this metallic, I don't even know if you guys can get like an adequate, and maybe this is why people do swatches. So this is Persilla right here. I'm gonna, just gonna take my finger and pick up just a skosh of that color, and I'm gonna be hitting right here at the edge of where that like purple and the white are kind of meeting, because it's like a, it's a pinky purple, like almost like periwinkle, I guess is what you would call that. I don't even know if you guys can tell from like further away, but I'm up close and it look good, okay? And then we're gonna end up touching that blue up just a hair, as well as like a tiny little tap of green. I know that that seems like a lot, it is. But whenever working with like vibrant colors like this, sometimes like the most work that you do, honestly, is like the, the back and forth of like getting your ish together, if that makes any sense. So that's what we're doing. We're getting our ish together. Giant cut in our eyes, but so that it doesn't look as drag as it probably secretly does. I'm not even showing my age because I didn't grow up with this and I was unaware of what it was until I worked on the show in New York, but I did work on Priscilla Queen of the Desert in New York and dear God, was that such an experience. That is the show that a um, drag queen gave me a black eye in uh, when I was when I was doing wardrobe in New York. I'm gonna add some like actual eyeliner 
and we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Today, when I go into work, I will be uh, purchasing some, some black eyeliner because even though I know for a fact that I own three or four, I literally used it yesterday, it's not, on the floor, accidentally in the trash, on a counter, in the bathroom, in here, in any of my makeup drawers, I got nothing. So we will be using brown eyeliner today. Um, and if it doesn't look good, I know. Although I feel like this is a dark enough brown, this is tea spill from Morphe. Perhaps this is a dark enough brown to, to do what I need it to do. We're gonna be switching brushes for this lower portion. We're gonna use this tiny little itsy bitsy kind of like pom pom looking brush. So first I'm going to use this little stipply brush and I kind of want to kiss some of that blue, that same blue, which is Angel Kitty. Now I'm gonna get just a touch of that violet and velvet. And I want that to be right here in the very center, kind of like mimicking this like shape that we have going on here. And then that like neon green, that's really more of a topper, which is a peekaboo. That is actually gonna be the last one for this inner corner right here. So in order to create like the leopard print part of this leopard print look, we're first going to be using the color tea spell from Morphe. This is one of the liquid liners, the same one that I used to do this like kind of here on the inner corner. We're basically going to be using this brush tip and kind of like dotting out like, um, like three fourths of a circle to start with in like a furry kind of line. So I didn't make a full circle, but I did a fuzzy back and forth like if that makes any sense. Hopefully you guys can see as I do this next one. And like some of them can be a little, a little bit more like triangular as opposed to circular, which I think is a great way of like breaking up, breaking up like the monotony of the pattern. You don't want it to be like Obvious. I'm also gonna throw in just some like random actual dots. So now we're gonna pick up the white Morphe liner. This one's called Blank Slate. And we are going to add the details. I don't want this to be a solid dot because I want the shape to look a little bit more organic, so I'm kind of letting the brush tip kind of like feather where it where it wants. I just want to make sure that we have like the contrast and the detailing in each of our little spots. And you know what I'm gonna do while I'm here? I'm also So my final thoughts of the palette are as follows. I think it's great. Uh, granted, I haven't played with like every single shade. I did feel like this was more of like a silk topper. This, I keep forgetting what it's called. This peekaboo color is definitely more of like a silk topper. I wish that it was like as vibrant and pigmented on as it looks like it's going to be. So I kind of used it as like an additive or used it to blend like this other green with say like the yellow. And it was, it was fine, but that's like the one critique that I would make. It does make me wonder about some of these other like more metallic shades um, and how like their payoff is or if they're supposed to be more like silk toppers. Overall, I'm always happy with a colorful palette that is mostly matte, so I love that they did that. I think the packaging is adorable. The sponges are great. I got it because they were super soft to the touch and I loved doing my makeup with it. I also think that these itsy bitsy little teeny weeny yellow polka dot, no, are at bomb.com. I loved using it to like pack on that white shade earlier and that is something I know I will continue to do. That's gonna be it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Drop a comment down below letting me know if you had Lisa Frank notebooks as a kid or if this is a collection or palette that you're interested in at all. I am super excited about it. I'm going to continue to play with it um, for sure. So that'll be really fun for me. I hope you all had a beautiful Thanksgiving and that you're looking forward to the rest of the holiday season. I know that I am. I love you guys so much. Have a very fun, safe, healthy day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. It's hot. It is boiling, sweltering, unfavorable. I don't like how teensy tiny is so baby. May your makeup be as good as that first sip of coffee.